bugs are one of the biggest and oldest problems when developing systems. Since they will always be part of your project's reality, it's very important that you learn how to manage them. Lack of organization and structure are among the main causes of problems when teams need to deal with bugs. In this video, I will describe how to use Jira to manage bugs in a couple of different situations. Please give a thumbs up if you liked the video and don't forget to subscribe. Let's take a look to the first example, when a bug is found during the development cycle of an item. Finding errors in a story that is under development is one of the most common situations. Still, too many teams aren't sure about how they should manage this. Now let's take a look at the Bears team. The Bears team is developing a new solution and have recently started a new iteration. Everyone is busy working to reach the iteration goal, and to do so, they need to deliver several user stories. As they move forward in the iteration, stories keep progressing in their usual development life cycle. The team is confident that they will have them done by the time of their iteration review. Meet Bill. Bill is one of the bears and is specialized in functional testing. Bill is running some tests in some of the stories that the team is developing. While he was running those tests, Bill found some errors related to those. After completing the tests, he picked up his notes and went to talk to the developers to explain what he found. After a couple of minutes with the whole team, Anna recognized one of the errors as part of the functionality that she developed. After that, it was Sebastian who also immediately identified the two other errors as being caused by the code he created. After collecting the necessary information and as part of the agreed process, Bill went to the team's board and put three post-its under the corresponding user stories, each representing the errors that he found. Additionally, and as requested by Anna and Sebastian, he also included their names so everyone could know who would take care of those. After this, Bill got back to work. Later on, Anna and Sebastian provided some additional information, included in time estimated to solve those problems. Now, let's take a look on how this would look like in Jira. After collecting the necessary information, Bill started by accessing the first story he was testing. After, he created a subtask to describe the problem he found. The description field can be used to provide details about the steps to recreate the error or the environment it was found. Still, this is somehow informal as this is part of the development work and should be solved very soon. Finally, he assigned the subtask to Anna, as agreed with her. After registering the subtask, he accessed his own testing task he had for that story and updated the remaining time left to reflect the additional time he will need to perform the tests, as a new round will be required. Bill then accessed the two other stories where he found problems and updated them in the exact same way, including reviewing his own estimates. Later, after taking a bit of time to analyze in more detail the error, Anna included some additional information about the time she expected to take to solve the problem. And guess what? Sebastian did the same for the other two errors that he found. Now, What's the impact of these changes in the team's Scrum board? As you can see, the newly created subtasks are linked to the different stories they refer to. This approach makes it visible the work that is still required to reach the iteration goal. When Sebastian visualizes the work that he has in hands, the new tasks are visible and he can comment on them in the next daily stand-up. The same happens with Anna. The filters configured on the top are an easy tool to help conducting the daily standup. And what about the impact in the burndown chart? As you could expect, there's a change on the remaining work, as it has increased during this period here. This is obviously the consequence of the new tasks that were assigned to Anna and Sebastian to correct the errors and the updated estimates from Bill to retest those stories. Could it be simpler than that? 
I don't think so. As you could see, this was a relatively simple exercise and probably the most common. Though it's simple to implement, it still requires a lot of discipline and, of course, communication. Let's take a look at another example where a bug is found in a backlog item that was already done. Let's go back to the Bears team and to hardworking Bill. As usual, he was running some tests when he found a regression error in a functionality that was already done. He took note in a post-it and after finishing the remaining tests, he went to talk with his colleagues to explain what he found. After a couple of minutes in discussion and explaining what was found, they all concluded that was indeed a bug. They asked Bill to register in the backlog to be analyzed by all of them when they had a bit of time. They would make a deeper analysis to provide a relative estimate and discuss it with Chris, the product owner, for prioritization. While going back to his desk, Bill put the post-it in the backlog for later evaluation. So, let's see how this would look like in Jira. After the team agreed it was indeed a bug, Bill was asked to register in Jira. He started creating a bug type of item, filling the title and the description with very objective information. Since this bug was not yet discussed in detail with the rest of the team, the story points field should remain empty. However, in order for the team and the product owner to have a better understanding of how big the item is and thus prioritize it, this information should be filled soon. Other important elements to include are the steps to recreate, where Bill will detail all the required steps to reproduce the error. He can also refer to the test case that is connected to the bug, which already includes the step where the test failed. The acceptance criteria is also another very important element to consider. This is what will ensure that the bug is actually solved. The attributes environment, severity and workaround are also important. This is why precise information should be provided. After it's created, the bug will populate the backlog while it waits for a more detailed analysis from the team. This effort will help preparing the bug to be part of an iteration planning and be worked like another item. The bug will then follow its own workflow, which you can learn about in my video about workflows. In the second scenario, the error found is no longer part of the current iterations development effort. This is why a bug type of item was created and headed to the backlog for planning, instead of creating subtasks, just like it was done in the first scenario. However, based on this second scenario, you may ask what would happen if the bug found instead of being planned for future development, would have to be solved immediately. In this case, a bug type of item would be created with a couple of unique and relevant differences. First, the bug would be investigated immediately, which would mean that all the information should also be completed immediately. Second, the story points assigned to a bug would always be zero. In this way, the team's velocity would not be erroneous. And that's it for managing bugs with Jira. Don't forget to give a thumbs up if you liked the video and subscribe the channel. My name is Tiag Pelot and this is Agile with Jira series.